guys, today's, vi um, <laughs> today's video is how to improve as a makeup artist. So I'm not saying that I'm the best makeup out there. So I'm not saying that I'm the best makeup out there i'm not the best makeup definitely not the best makeup <laughs> i'm not the best makeup artist out there but i have got some tips and tricks to improve your skills and your professionalism etc because when i started being a makeup artist i wanted to research how to get more clients just be better overall and there wasn't any videos on how to be better makeup artist there's just videos how to become a makeup artist or videos how to be better at makeup but not actually specifically for a makeup artist so i hope that you enjoy this video i hope that it's useful and please like and subscribe if you like my channel so i've just got a banana milkshake that's the first step to being a good makeup artist banana milkshake <laughs> So something that I think is really helpful when you're trying to become a better makeup artist is to practice on like being friendly, so just to be nicer to clients and like nicer to other people and stuff. For me, confidence is something that I really struggle with because if I don't really know people that well, I find it really hard to speak to them. So yeah, it's something that I really struggle with, but I feel like from being a makeup artist, I have got more confident and stuff, so that is something that... I do kind of think is really important like being more confident speaking being nicer if you're if like someone goes to one person and they're really really friendly and so nice and just really funny and you really get along with them and the makeup's like a 10 out of 10 and you go to someone else makeup's also a 10 out of 10 but you just feel a bit awkward they're not really speaking to you if you're someone who likes someone who's really friendly and funny and like bantering and all that kind of stuff then you're gonna most likely go back to the other one because the makeup's like the same standard so they're just giving you that little bit extra something to make you want to go back uh, you might be thinking but how do i know when a client wants me to speak to them and doesn't want me to speak to them you can sometimes tell when you're making conversation with clients if they want to speak to you or not so you can just kind of be like oh so where are you going like what are you up to like blah blah blah, blah. and then after they've answered like the compulsory questions like the ones that will kind of help you decide how to do the makeup and stuff after that see how open they seem to having conversations with you just because some people like to come and have a really relaxing experience and not really speak that much and other people just want to like speak to someone react to how customer is how to improve with the actual makeup side of things so this isn't like um, just like speaking to clients and stuff like actual makeup I feel like to try and make your kit as good as it can be so what I mean by that is as as much as as possible that was real hard to speak but basically so say you have a hundred pound like spending money um just kind of like really think about what you're buying with the money i'm not saying like go out and spend thousands and thousands of pounds on like getting the best kit that you can possibly get just saying with the money that you have and the resources that you have just get the best that you can get for you lighting which really goes well with like makeup as well and like instagram pictures and stuff because I've got light in here, so I've got one light over here, and then I've got one light over there, which I don't think is really making that much of a difference. No, that's not really making any difference. Oh yeah, it is. It's making difference there. And then we've got this light over here. First of all, you want to kind of be on as many social media platforms as possible. You want to be on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, all that kind of thing. I don't really tend to use Snapchat just because I don't really have that many contacts on there, and I don't really like Snapchat that much. I also don't really use Twitter, but I have got an account on all of them just so that if people ask me for it then i have got something also because even if it's only like 10 people that you've got as your contacts it's still a 10 it's still 10 people like that's still 10 clients potentially be active and be as active as possible but not too active so a lot of people kind of tell you to post daily but i don't know if it's just me personally but when i see a lot of pages posting daily it makes me want to unfollow them because i'm just like i don't only want to see you on instagram what i kind of like suggest rather than posting daily is just posting like once every two days if you want to post as much as possible 
So something that you can actually do on Facebook and on Instagram. I'm not sure what other social media platforms you can do it on, but on them two platforms, you can do sponsored posts. So what that basically means is you can pay a little bit of money towards Facebook or Snapchat, and then they can like basically advertise for you. So it reaches like more people that you wouldn't normally tend to reach. Um, a lot of people kind of like, think different things of this like some people think that it's a scam and that YouTube and not YouTube that um, Instagram and Facebook is just like charging you and they're not actually showing it to anyone because no one really gets any like um, anything much from it but some other people love it and they sponsor posts all the time and they see a lot of like feedback from it Um, from the sponsored post you can actually like do a post and you can literally pay like a pound and then see how it goes and then you don't have to do any more if you don't want to that is something that i would recommend personally because you're only paying a pound you don't have to do it if you don't want to and you can actually see like how it works kind of thing you can see how many people have saw your posts if you have a business account on instagram to create a business account on instagram i'm sure there's loads of tutorials all over youtube but just quickly while we're here so you know you don't have to go away if you don't want to um you basically just go through settings press business profile then you have to have a facebook page and then you can do it um I have a business profile on Instagram just because I feel like it's a lot easier to like look at your um, look at your interactions with your followers and stuff like that. I don't really tend to use it that much but if you really want to see like when your interactions are the best, when your posts are getting the most reactions, when you're getting the most likes and all that kind of thing, it is all there, all the analytic all the analytic all the anal <laughs> I cannot speak all the an analytic I'm just gonna write it on the screen. I can't say it right now because my, my head has gone past that word. <laughs> so yeah, all of that kind of stuff is on Instagram. So it's really, really useful if you're wanting to try and reach as many people as possible to go through that. To do with advertisement is like business, business cards and stuff like that. Also go into like paying money to go to different events. So what that basically means is like, there are loads of so many different events you can find quite a lot of them on like facebook and stuff where you can like hire a stall and then that stall is yours you can do whatever you want if you're good at like glitter on the face or um face painting or just standard makeup anyway you can have all your business cards and your leaflets out on the like the table type thing also at these events you can kind of like get your name out there you can be like oh yeah i'm on instagram i do appointments i do this i do that it's the same as wedding fairs if you go to wedding fairs and then they're and you're there you're you know meeting clients doing this doing that it's so good for business just because you're like one of the ones who they see they might not have known you they might not have any way of finding you on any social media so you being there is granting yourself more contacts and more clients so with um like kind of like more on like the general um things something that i kind of feel would help you improve as a makeup artist is if you purchase more like makeup brushes Owning a lot of makeup brushes really helps the way that you're doing the makeup because it means that you can create you can create more looks you don't have to spend as much time in between clients washing brushes because you might have like a clean alternate for the brush that you have also having more than one like big fluffy blending brush will help because it means that you will be able to like blend better different like points of the eye makeup and different like stages of the eye makeup one-to-one -one lessons will help you become a better makeup artist because if you if you're really good at makeup but there's like certain kind of like looks and styles and like techniques that you've not figured out or like fully mastered yet going having a one-to-one -one lesson with a different makeup artist can help you improve on the things that you feel need improving um youtube videos is something that really helps me when i feel like i need to improve my skills because you can watch someone else do it you can wonder how people do things i can't remember what it was but there was something the other week that i had no idea how to do and then I YouTube it. I think it was the ombre liner when it's like dark to light. I was just thinking, how can like 
I was just thinking I would like to watch a YouTube video to figure out how to do that so I did. Practice and don't post. So what I mean by this is you don't need to post every single thing that you do. You can do practices, you can do models, you can do like looks on yourself and you don't need to post it if you don't like it because it's your portfolio at the end of the day. If a model went and did loads of photo shoots and she did a photo shoot that she hated and she wasn't modelling good on it, it's unlikely that she's going to go for a job with a modelling agency and be like, here's my pick, hire me. So yeah, you don't need to post every single thing. You don't need to post every single client. What I personally do is have difference in photos between Instagram and Facebook because on my Instagram I feel like I prefer it to kind of be more of my style so I only really tend to post looks that I feel is like my style but because when you do makeup it's the client's request there are a lot of looks that you might do that you might not like that you might think are weird like you might just think that the overall picture doesn't really go in with like your theme or your look or your like feeling and that's totally fine but a lot of people so say say you only really tend to do young clients and then you get one like older client and it doesn't really go in with your theme because normally you're doing really full-on like glam gorge looks and then she just wants something so natural and you're thinking i don't really want to post that you if you then post it on facebook someone else can see that you can do that type of makeup so they're more likely to come to you because if you think about it if you saw a makeup artist who's amazing but your mum was like i want to go to the same place as you you're going to have to find one that can do both. So if you find a page that's perfect for you, but there's nothing like for your mum, then you won't be able to go there. And if you find something that's perfect for your mum, you can't really go there if you don't like the makeup yourself. So um, yeah, kind of just think about that. So that's why I post all type of looks on my Facebook and just mainly I do still post like everyone and everything like I don't just like only young people allowed that was just an example but um yeah I just tend to post more on my Facebook than my Instagram just because I want my Instagram to be more kind of like my image and my portfolio and then my Facebook to be like to attract all type of clients and to show that I'm really like willing to do like anyone and any look. So something that I really like kind of like see as important, communication with clients. So I do know quite a lot of makeup artists that will kind of like ignore the clients and just do whatever they want and that's fine if that's their thing, if the client's happy at the end of the day that's okay. But I personally tend to be really wanting to get what the client wants even though that's kind of like my look. If someone wants something, they're coming to you, they're paying you, they want what they want. It's like if you went to a restaurant and you said, can I have a chicken burger? And then they was like, yeah. And then they ended up coming with like a beef burger because they thought it tasted nicer. I don't like beef burgers. I'm obsessed with chicken. <laughs> so do you know what I mean? You need to be, it's the client who's paying. So you need to do what the client wants at the end of the day. If they come to you and be like, I want purple skin and green eyes. Then you're like, what? <laughs> what <laughs> then that's fine you can kind of like say to a client you don't need to be like yeah that's fine and do something completely different you can say to a client <laughs> that was a very long breath i was like awkward client <laughs> you can say to a client if you don't think something will look that good you can be like you are pick you are the client i'll do whatever you want me to but i'm just gonna advise i don't personally think that um purple will go with green because they are contrasting colors um, you can use purple and green together we could do like a purple smoky eye and then have a little bit of like a green glare underneath to still get them two colours but it's not going to be so in your face that it looks crazy and people are going to be like what the hell is that makeup that was just an example as well like I've never actually had anyone ask for purple and green if you don't ask for purple and green that's fine <laughs> but yeah you can kind of advise towards what makeup looks you think would look nicer or um what type of thing about the makeup look that you didn't like but i don't think it's fair to kind of say to a client that you'll do what they want you to do and then do something else or to kind of like be like oh yeah no i'm not gonna do that I'm not gonna do that hon not doing that 
so yeah that's just communication is so important with me i really think it is um there's a difference between them saying give me this makeup look and then it not turning out completely how you thought it did to them actually saying like do me a red smoky eye and then you doing it blue it's completely different things or just saying that you don't want to do it red she's like no i don't want to do it red hon don't want to do that and i'll be like fab <laughs> Great. So something that I really think is useful when like trying to improve my skills is to make sure that I'm working in front of a mirror with like really good lighting. So good lighting you can just like either work with natural lighting or you can get ring lights that kind of go from like 70 to 100 ish pounds depending on where you get it from or you can get light boxes that cost about 40 to like 60 pounds depending on where you get it from and then um, yeah I just I really like it. Um, working in front of a light box because it's not I really like working in front of it like a soft box because I feel like it's because it's not too harsh I feel like when the line's really harsh it just isn't very flattering and when like the lights go off the face is going to look completely different so you don't want the lights to be too bright because then when you're putting like extra contour on when the lights go off you're going to be brown <laughs> something that I feel really helped me out when I was trying to improve um, is also to really check that I'm like blending eyeshadows and to use really good quality brushes so with blending eyeshadow you just really want to make sure that it's fully blended a trip a trip <laughs> a trick to check that it is blended is to use like a camera flash and take a photo of it and then kind of see where it's like not blended and where it is blended and then you can like go back in and give it an extra blend what i always say to people when i'm teaching one-to-one -one lessons is to blend until you think it's blended and then blend a little bit more because sometimes you can kind of see like where you are in the light that it's blended but then if they go somewhere else it might not look blended still also color match is so important when being a makeup artist so many people have came to me and been like when i'm like talking about the skin what type of foundations they want what type of foundations they normally wear like what their skin type is is they always feel like oh yeah i've had it done before but they made me really light or I've had it done before but they made me like way too orange so colour matching is key um, I always say to people it sounds so weird but you just say to people do you want me to match you up to your colour or would you like to be a little bit lighter or a little bit darker sometimes people are going home to go and put more fake tan on or go and wash fake tan off so just asking about how they want the skin tone to be is a perfect idea um, don't be afraid to mix foundations I mix foundations with nearly every single client it changes the consistency of the product so say you're using a really full coverage foundation but your client doesn't want it to be like too full coverage you can add like another foundation that's not as full to like change the consistency of the product something that i do is i don't look at the shade and be like cool that's fine put it all over the face i'll get it like where the product is like on a mixer or whatever and then get a concealer brush put it on the chin and then I will do the, I will do, I'll, uh, I cannot speak. I will apply the makeup as a line backwards. So I'll leave the front bit wet and then the back bit, I'll blend it out a little bit so it kind of goes into the skin. Then you can see the colour when you first apply it and how it kind of blends out behind it. So it's like there. And then I'll leave it on the skin while you're like just doing something else, maybe like tidying up your kit or like washing a few quick brushes. That means that it will oxidise slightly. So nearly every single foundation oxidises, even if it's only a tiny bit, because it's when it mixes with the air. So some foundations will go a tiny bit darker, some foundations will go a completely different shade, some will even go lighter. So that's why you need to kind of like leave it for a couple of seconds just to really see that shade and then say to the client, are you happy with this shade or would you like to go darker or lighter? Then you know that they are going to be happy with the shade that you're putting all over the face. Sometimes when it's there, it might look a bit lighter or a bit darker. So if they say, I want it quite a bit darker, you might know not to add too much more darker. So then you can kind of be like, yeah, sure, that's fine. And then just like 
do it and then put it all over the face and then if they do want it darker or lighter when it's on the face you can add more cream contour so you can get a beauty blender you can get a darker shade and you can kind of like apply it around the perimeter of the face kind of ignoring underneath the eyes because rather than like a cream contour where it's like structured to the cheekbones you're going to just kind of give like more of like a three-dimensional like darker effect to the outside of the face or if you want it lighter in the um, inner perimeter of the face to put a lighter foundation or to put like concealer underneath their eyes a little tip as well is you can actually hashtag i think it's 10 um things in your story but if you don't really want people to see loads of hashtags in your story you can like press on i'll try and like do it over here but i'm not sure if i'll be able to do it or not but on like where the story is, I'm just trying to think about it, like at the top hand corner, when you press on the writing way, like the colour, you can press on at the bottom next to all the colours, that one there which means you can click somewhere on the screen and then it'll change to that colour. Click that and then click anywhere on the screen on like the picture that you've picked and then you can change the writing into the colour of something in the background and then you can get the writing and make it really small and put it on top of the thing. So then when people go on your story they can't see the hashtags. People might not want people to see the hashtags because if you're posting just a normal story like um, appointments available this weekend and then it's like hashtag make parts, it's hashtag MUA, hashtag England, hashtag blah, 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 like it looks a tiny bit desperate, some people might think. Um, so you can hide them in the story but then they'll still come up when people type the hashtags and then see the story so you're still getting that like interaction with more people. Also something that's really like cool with Instagram is just to really be interacting with people, go if you work in a specific part of like England, let's say, type that hashtag, type that in on locations on Instagram and then just like people's pictures who are in the area and then they might then come back on your page and look at your page and be like, oh, I need to make a for next week and then book you. Yes. So that is the end of today's video. I hope that you enjoy. Please like and subscribe and I will see you next time just got some brushes just to put in the thumbnail <laughs> um but yeah i hope that you enjoyed so much i hope that um you're just really liking the videos that i'm putting out recently um please like and subscribe it really does help let me know if any of the tips and tricks helped you feel like you're making a bigger business for yourself